So this video is to go over how to create a basic double page spread. So we've already previously discussed Adobe InDesign, where everything's at and what's happening. So as you do this video, what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video and do the steps that I go through so that you can do this along with me. And our goal again is to make a double basic page spread. So first what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to File, New, Document, and we're gonna make a new document. There's all different types of documents that one can make. Uh, we are gonna make a document for print. This is gonna be for, say, like a magazine or for the yearbook. Particularly, this is going to be in the style of a yearbook double page spread. We want our double page spread to be two pages, and we also wanna start on page number two. The reason for this is because Adobe InDesign offsets page one, and we're working on a spread, which is pages side by side. So we want to go start on page two and make it two pages long. So just a quick recap, tools on the side, hover over them. It tells you what they are. Options for those tools change based on the tools that you select. Up here, you have windows, always found under the windows tab, including for the tools. Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign all have the same layout as far as how the programs look. So first what we're gonna do is we always begin everything that we do in InDesign, we use grids and guides. So we're gonna go up to layout and create guides. So guides are used to organize your content on your page. So we're gonna set this up to fit them to the margins. We're gonna create four columns and we're gonna preview this so we can see them. So four columns. And we're going to select OK. So these are our column guides. So these help us organize the content on our page. When we print them or export them, you can export them with column guides, but the default is to not export them with the column guides. So also, I noticed that we see our rulers. So our rulers can be found at the top or the side. And you can always turn those on and off. If you go to View, you can hide the rulers or turn them on. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to drag down an eye line. So I'm just showing you this so that you know how to take things out of rulers. So I'm going to click in the ruler and drag down probably about three quarters of the way down. I'm going to drag down one on the other side of the page. I'm going to drag down another one. I'm going to make the distance between the two the same distance as the gaps between the columns going vertically. These gaps is going to be the same here. And then I'm going to just match that up with this one over here on this side. So there's various elements to a double page spread. So currently they're single pages, but we want them to function as one element. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a photo that's going to go over the gutter. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool. And from this column right here, I'm going to click and drag out and go across the gutter. And I'm going to drag it down so that it touches every column guide. So notice this column is empty. The space between the columns is empty. This picture is going to fill one, two, three, four completely. It's going to touch all of the column guides as well as the eye line that I created. And I also can just flip these over so this can note where a picture is going to go. If I want to make it look nicer just for the sake of what I'm doing, under my swatches, swatches are uh, single colors. So say you go to Home Depot, you want to paint your bedroom, you're going to pick up a paint swatch on the wall. Swatches, they're the colors. If you don't see them, again, everything's always under window and you can turn those on. So I'm just going to pick blue. And it doesn't really matter. I just, this is what I did. It just looks a little nicer. So what we have right now, this is our dominant photo. So this is called the dominant photo. It's the focal point of our spread. It's the largest item on this spread. It's where your eye goes first when you look at the page. And we're going to flank that with some other secondary photos. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I can do is I can just click on this and I can copy it and paste more of them, or I can just drag out more of them. 
But what I want you to do is set it up like this. So we're gonna make some secondary photos, and these are these are really just kind of contrasting photos. So I'm gonna put one here. Note the gap between all of the columns. I'm gonna put another one right here, and this one, just for the sake of explaining another term, this one's gonna have a bleed. So a bleed means it goes beyond the page. So when it goes to the press, the picture goes past it, and when they cut it, the picture will go obviously to the edge because there was actually more of it there. So go ahead and set that up like that. Now what we're gonna do is add some contrasting photos. So these are secondary photos. These are gonna be contrasting photos. These are just more images and you know maybe this is kind of an odd shape but i'll just put it like that so i'll put one there and then i'm going to put one right here so now we kind of have this asymmetrically balanced layout with a large focal point secondary photos we have a bleed so i think we've got a pretty good layout going here so far so next what we're going to do is we're going to address the type or the text so with the t with the type tool we're going to click and drag out a box because that's how it works. And we can type in that box. I'm going to just type the word headline. I'm going to make it very large. Again, every time you click a tool, the tools up here uh, are changed based on the tool that you pick. I'm going to center justify it. And uh, you can choose whatever fonts you want. Uh, I have this installed. I really like this font a lot. So I'm going to go with Bevis Noya. Um, and then, in fact, I can just make it even larger than I see it. So that looks like a nice headline. So this is the title of our page. And now what we can do is we can put an article in here. So I'm going to, again, take the type tool, click and drag out a box. I can type in this box, or a faster way, and it also looks better, is if when I'm in the box, if I go up to type, I can fill with placeholder text. So it's going to fill the box with words that look like words that aren't really words. And again, at any time, please hit pause. Make sure you're following along. Make sure that you're precise, that your boxes touch the guidelines. It's important that they touch all of the guidelines that they're perfect. That's what they're there for. All right, what I'm going to do now is I have one column. I could simply copy and paste it a bunch of times, and that's probably what I'll do. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to go to Edit Copy, and I'm going to Paste. So I have another one, because again, this is where my article is going. And I can go to Edit Paste and do it again. So right now, each column is its own unique column. And the words, in fact, they don't flow from one to the next. So if you type something uh, in a Google Doc and paste it in, it's going to be stuck in one column. So the way you get the, these to flow is down here at the very bottom, there's a little box. It could be a white box or it could have a red plus sign in it. But either way, click it once and then click into the next box. And so what happens is it's flowing from this box to this box. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to click the little box right here. It may have a plus sign in it or not. Click it and then click the next box. And so now all of the text flows from one column to the next. And then I'm just going to style this real quick because I think it will look better. Um, I'm going to pick a font called Roboto. I think that's a very nice looking font. And also the font size, I'm going to, the defaults, we never want to go with defaults. So I'm going to copy and paste a little bit more type. But this is Roboto, font size 10. And then while I'm at it, I'll, I will also um, change the space between the lines here to 11. So just to tighten it up a little bit. And that's the space between the lines is called letting. It's the space between. All right. So now what I want, I want some captions. I need a caption for this box. I need a caption for this one, this one, this one, and this one. And so what we're going to do is I'm just going to, you know, since I'm just going to borrow, I'm going to grab that. I'm going to copy and paste another one. And I'm going to drag it in here. And I'm going to make the distance between the text and the picture the same as what we got going on here. So this caption box is for this picture. And I'm going to copy and paste another one. And 
this one goes to here. And what I'll do is I'm just going to copy these. I'm going to go up to Edit Copy. And then I can paste it, or I can paste in place. It's going to put it over the other one. And then I can just use the arrow keys on the keyboard to slide it over. And now I have captions for this picture and this picture. And I think I'm missing another picture. I think it would look good with another box. So I'm going to copy another blue box and set this up. And I'll just set it up like that. So that's good. That looks really nice. And now this needs a caption box, and so does this. So I'm going to copy this one. So I can right click and copy it, or go up to Edit Copy. I can go to Edit Paste or Paste in Place, and then use the arrow keys on the keyboard. So if I use the arrow key, it moves it one pixel at a time. If I hold the Shift key and I hit the arrow key, it moves it 10 pixels at a time. So I'm going to copy another one because now I have a caption for this one, but I need one for here. So I'm going to paste this into place, and I'll put that one up there. So now every picture has a caption box. So this is uh, kind of the basic anatomy of a, a double page spread. So the last thing we want to do is get pictures in here. So I need to find some pictures. So I'm going to go to uh, first click the box that you want it to go in. And I'm going to go to File, Place. And I'll go find some stuff here, some pictures. Give me a second to kind of cycle through all of this. You can find them on the internet if you want, just for the sake of this exercise. Or if you want to as well, you could um, use your own pictures if that's what you want to do. So I'm just going to grab some images here and stick pictures in the boxes. So here's one. I'm going to click More. So I can go to File, Place, or I can press Control D. All the shortcuts are listed on the sides. And I'm just going to fill these up with pictures. And I'm just going to randomly pick, <clears throat> put pictures in different picture boxes. And then when we're done here, we're going to want to scale all this stuff so that it fits in the boxes. So the way you move pictures is the black arrow moves the whole box. And the white arrow moves the picture inside of the box. So how do we rescale this stuff? So if I hold the Shift and Control key and I grab the corner, I can rescale it down proportionately. So again, holding the Shift and Control key, keeping it proportionate. And there we go. There's another way to do this as well. I can click on it with a white arrow, and I can then right click it, and I can go to fitting, and I can fit it into the frame proportionally. So that's another way to do this. I'm just going to keep scaling all this stuff up. So I want everything to fit. So again, holding the shift and control key. And a lot of these pictures aren't necessarily made for these boxes because they're weird shapes. Um, but you get the idea. So we'll just we'll pretend like it looks great. So again, shift and control with a white arrow to grab the corners. If you don't hold the shift and control key, you're going to skew all the pictures, and they're going to look horrible. People don't look like this. People don't look like this. They need to look like what they look like, or else they'll get mad, and it, it won't look good. So now that we have pictures in here, the last thing that we want to do is everyone should read towards the gutter. So this is the gutter. This is the center or the spine. So we have one page here, and we have one page here, and everybody's body language should read towards the middle. So this page is fine. She reads that way. She reads that way. She's looking the wrong way, and she's also looking the wrong way. So how do we flip this around? So with a white arrow, if I click on it, and then I right-click, I can go to Transform, and I can flip it horizontally. So, And then I'll, I'll just use the arrow keys to move it over. 
So now she also is looking towards the gutter. And I can kind of balance that a little bit better. Maybe like that. Um, and then this one as well, I can right click on it, transform, flip horizontal, and then slide it into place. So this is the basic anatomy of a double page spread. I think in doing something like this, you've learned how to use Adobe InDesign. It's all about boxes. There are picture boxes, there are text boxes, that's it. And then one final thing that I'll share with you is this. Also, there is a pen tool like an Illustrator. Not only are they boxes, I can draw shapes if I want, and I can go to File, Place, and I can stick pictures in any shape because these are also boxes. Or I can grab the Type tool and click in it, and I can type in the box. So that's all this program is. It's all about creating guidelines, and then that's used to organize things, and then the rest of it is boxes. So what, what tools did I use? I used the, the direct selection tool, or the selection tool, the direct selection tool. I used the type tool, and I made a box. And then, of course, the zoom tool and the hand tool. So, and then if I want to see what this looks like without any with the guidelines, I can go to View, Grids and Guides, and I can hide these guides. And then lastly, yeah, these are called frame edges. I can go to View, Extras, and hide the frame edges. And we can see what the page really looks like. These little plus signs mean that there is more text beyond the box. It's just kind of a warning. Anyway, that is the basics of Adobe InDesign and how to create a double page spread.